Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here and welcome back to another Electron tutorial series video. Today, we're going to be talking about the browser window class. So let's just dive right into it. The first thing I want to show you guys is what our application looks like right now. So I'm going to do npm run dev and that'll just quickly start up our application and display it. And what you'll see is we get the application and then it just says, hello, welcome to the window. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that it was very jittery when starting up. So I want you to pay attention to what happens when we start up the application right now. You're going to notice it loads content very weirdly. It shows Svelte app and then it loads in this bar and it kind of has a couple uh, flashes. So it flashes twice, um, which is a little weird and it doesn't look very natural or smooth. So one thing we can do to fix that is by actually going into the constructor of our browser window in setting show to be false by default. So by setting show to be false, we're actually saying, hey, we don't want to load this window at all, actually. So what's going to happen is when we start up this application, it's going to seem like it's doing nothing, but really it's because we're not showing the application. So how do we actually now show it, but only when the window is ready to be loaded? Well, one thing we can do is do window dot and use an event listener to listen for the load events. So we can do window dot on in ready dash to dash show is the event we need to actually uh, list, you know, show the application when it's ready to be shown. So we can do something like window dot show because it takes in a event name and then a callback function. So we just want to call window dot show when the application is ready to be shown. And what you'll see now is when we restart the application, it's gonna look a lot nicer and more smooth. So you can see just like that, it takes a couple hundred milliseconds longer to load up, but it also shows the application without any jittering or flashing, and it looks a lot smoother. Now, one other thing you might wanna be able to do is get rid of this black bar up here. So by default, this is the default title bar you can use with Electron. And typically, I don't like having title bars. I would rather create my own um, using HTML and CSS. So one thing you might want to be able to do is remove this bar. So how do we do that? Well, luckily, that is a really simple thing. All we have to do is do auto hide menu bar and set it equal to true inside of the constructor. By doing this and restarting the application, it'll actually just get rid of that bar entirely. So just like that we have no more bar. And that's basically that. Um, one thing I'm gonna show you next is how we can actually handle resize events and move events with Electron. So say we wanna find out when the application is resized. Um, to do that, we can use another event emitter, uh, handler, sorry, and we can do window.on and then listen for the resized event. Now this event will fire a callback function whenever it's resized. So basically when we actually shrink or grow the application size. Now I'm gonna create an anonymous function and just console.log uh, window resized when the window is resized. So what you'll see is when we restart the application and run npm run dev, when we resize the application, I'm gonna bring this up here. So I shrink it window resized. I expand it, window resized. So that is how we can handle the events. Now let's say we actually want to change the window's uh, size to always be a constant size. One thing we can do is then just go right down here and just override it. So we can do window dot uh, set uh, size, right? So setting the size takes in a width, which is a number, and a height, which is a number. And we're gonna say we want the size to always be 800 by 700. And it takes in a true or false value whether you want to animate it. I'm gonna say true. Now, if we go back into our console, restart the application, what you'll see is we'll always get resized, just like before. So I can bring it down, but you see it automatically goes back to its size. Now, this doesn't look very good, but I did want to show you that you can do it just like this. The better way to do this is just to simply um, say resizable to false. What this will do is make sure the users cannot resize the application in the first place. 
so it gets rid of the whole need for constantly setting it back. So you can see I can't even try to resize it. It doesn't provide me with the draggable bars. Now that we have resizing out of the way, one thing you might want to be able to do is find out how many event listeners you have. Because currently we only have two. We have a ready to show event and we have a resized event. Let's say we want to be able to listen to a whole bunch of them and find out how many we have. One thing we can do is do window dot listeners and passing in the event name. So for example, resized, we can get a list of all of the functions that get called on resize. So I'm going to do const resize events is equal to window.listeners and then the name of the event resized, which matches this. Now, if I come down here and console.log resize events, what you'll see is we should get an array of all of the callback functions. And here they are. We get an array with one function, which is an anonymous function. If we want to then create another event, like let's say we do window.resize, or window, sorry, dot on. I open Visual Studio Code. There we go. Window dot on uh, resized. And let's say we want to create a new function called test func. Right? So we're going to create a new function called test func. And up here, I'm just going to create it. Do const test func is equal to a new function. And I'm going to console.log test func. Now, what you'll see now is by rerunning this, we should now have two objects inside of our array. The first one is the anonymous function, and the second one is the function with a name of test func. Now, let's say we actually want to call these functions. We can do that just as well. If you know, uh, if you have the handle to the function, like we do right here, you can actually call this without the event needing to be fired or stored in a variable, whatever you want to do. For example, I can do resize events dot for each and get the funks and then just do funks dot call. And this will actually call the function. So what we would expect to see is that we get window resized as well as test func printed to the console uh, one time. So let's actually test this. And sure enough, we get window resized and test func printed to the console. Now, this isn't very practical in this example, but this is something you can use and something you can do. So it's something to be aware of. Okay. And lastly, let's say we want to get rid of all of our event listeners. Well, that's also pretty simple. We can do window dot remove all listeners. And what this will do is um, given an events name, it will remove all of the event listeners for that name. So for example, I can pass in resize. And currently remember, we have two events. And now if I do console.log um, window dot listener counts, which is basically just getting the size of the array for resized. What you'll see is this will now give us zero. So it's going to remove all of the listeners and then it's going to check and see how many we have. So by rerunning this, we get zero because we're listening for the events. We're creating two event listeners, one right here and one right here. And then we're not doing anything with this. We're removing the events and then we're logging to the console uh, the amount of events we have, which is zero. Okay. So that's useful and all. Now let's say we want to actually get the bounds of the window when we resize it. Like let's say we want to actually get the size. So instead of console.logging window resize, I'm going to console.log window dot get size. And just like set size, get size returns an array of um, numbers. So the first index is going to be the X size or the uh, width. And the second number is going to be the height. So if we console.log this, again, nothing's going to happen by default. But if I resize the window to a very, very small number, what you see is we get 410 wide by 280 pixels high. If I make this very tall, 
it's 410 by 923 pixels high. So just like that, we can actually get and listen for resize events. And the same thing works for move. So for example, M-O-V-E-D for a moved event. And we can just do get position instead of get size. And instead, this will actually return the Windows position on my displays. If the user has multiple displays, like I do, I have a right screen and a left one, if you can see, it'll actually, um, con you know, it'll console log that position. So for example, right here, I have the window very close to the top left. So we get 22 pixels on the X axis right here and 26 on the Y. The reason it's 26 is because in computer speak, typically the X starts on the bottom left and the Y starts on the top left. So all the way down here would be 1080 and all the way over here would be uh, 1920. If I want to then move this window to another screen, for example, you can see the pixels are 2376 by 310. And that's because it's all the way on my secondary monitor. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.